Hey everyone, welcome to Meeple Bits. Thanks for joining me today. In today's episode of Tabletop Simulator, we're going to go through the game Dead of Winter. This is a community created edition, so it is available on the Steam Workshop. Links in the description below, as always. The title of this one Dead of Winter The Long Night Scripted, created by user Swift Panda. So let's go through and find out what elements are scripted, what is available and automated for you, and then what you, the gamers and players, need to manage and maintain and control on your own. So stay tuned as we dive right in. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Tabletop Simulator and Dead of Winter. So as I noted, this is the Dead of Winter A Long Night version, but you have the option to either choose the base game or the expansion in this particular um, setup and scripted version. So let's go ahead and take a look at the different elements and components and um, dive into what is done for you and then what you as the players are going to have to do on your own. So to begin, you've got exactly what you would expect. All the different areas available for the uh, police station, the grocery store, the school, etc. And then up here, is the sort of expansion board. So depending on if you're playing with or without the expansion, we'll determine whether or not you use this. One caveat, if you're not gonna use the expansion, this board does remain in view, so you'll just have to kind of mentally or you know, observantly ignore it. So you're gonna to have to kind of just put it out of your mind if you choose not to use this particular section. So when you're ready to start play, as always, select your color, and then take your position. I'll choose the lower left in the red position. My table mate's chosen their spot. Next, in this particular scripting, I'll go through these settings in just a moment, but what you're gonna need to do, now I know that I'm blocking it and I can't really zoom in uh, too much on it. I'll try to position it as best as I can so it's easily legible, but there are some uh, instructions here on the right side. So it says step one, Place your desired main objective on the board. Step two, choose the settings and select start game. Discard any unwanted characters back into the deck. Hit spawn survivors and then use turns to automatically deal crossroads. So to begin, here are the different set of uh, cards that are available to choose from. So let's just go ahead and grab the first card off the top of the deck and put it where it belongs, here in the main objective section. Now you're ready to begin the initial setup and scripting. So come down here, and you're either going to choose the original version with the long night or without. For this tutorial or walkthrough, we're gonna leave the longest night turned off. You can improve or you can add any other elements or modules that you want because, well, it is available for you. Uh, you can enable or disable traders promo cards, crossroads, or anything explicit in the crossroad cards. I'm going to turn off the promo cards, and then we're going to begin. So once you've got your, your main objective set in the right location, and then you've got your settings chosen, go ahead and select Start Game. It's then going to grab and deal out all the different uh, elements that are required in accordance to, one, the setup, and then to the number of players. So we've just been dealt out our hand along with our secret objective. So you could put your main objective here over on the right side in accordance with, you know, the rules and how the play is supposed to go, or you could just keep it in your hand however you see fit. Whatever works and whatever's best for you, it's okay. But you're going to need to go through and determine which of your survivors you want to keep. So when you begin, go ahead and take, uh, find the survivors that you want to uh, keep and then discard the other two. So I'll go ahead and discard Carla, put her back into the deck up top, and then I'll also discard um, Talia. Put her face down, drop her to the deck. Then once all players have chosen their two starting survivors, you're then going to hit spawn survivors. Now you're not going to put your survivors out into the main play area just yet. So once we're all down to our, our hand size and cards, select 
spawn survivors. It's going to then hand out the number of dice you require. It's going to choose a first player. And then it's going to put in the different uh, survivors into the colony. Now, because this is a two-player game, you'll notice that there's one extra person thrown in there. Just ignore that for this uh, two-player purpose. So you're now ready to begin. You can then pick your survivors, drop them out into the, uh, the main play area to build up your following. Okay, like, there we go. Sometimes it's a little frustrating how they hand me the first player token with the dice stacked up in that way. But on your turn, you know, when, you're when all players are ready to roll their dice, they can hit that R key or just grab the dice, give it a shake and, well, throw it across the table if you like. But once you're ready to, uh, to begin, you know, roll the dice, put them into your unused dice section on your player board, and then get ready to, uh, to do everything else that you need to do on your particular turn. So this is a long and involved game, so we're not going to go into everything that's required. The main things that I wanted to show you, though, are what you're going to need to do on your turn. So let's say you wanted to contribute. Uh, so what's our current crisis? Dead Man's March. So we need to contribute tools or gas uh, to the tune of non-exiled players. So let's say I wanted to go ahead and uh, add in. Uh, let's see, do I have any... Uh, Tools, yeah, there we go. Let's, let's go ahead and add this in here, drop it in. You'll notice that's gonna snap into position. So a lot of things that are on this board are gonna snap into place. Example, when you move any characters around the colony, they will snap into their different locations, which is great. As well as the uh, cards that you put here or up here into the waste pile, which is very helpful. Now, some of the things that you're gonna need to do on your own. Well, you're going to have to draw food tokens and put them into the food supply, for example. Uh, you're going to need to drop in starvation tokens. Uh, whoops, there we go. Put that kind of off to the side, not in the food supply. You're going to need to manually set any barricades uh, that you want to uh, do. Manually move your character around the board into the different locations. Uh, choosing to do the different cards uh, at those locations choosing to uh, donate anything up here. So all of these things are gonna be manual for you to do on your turn and go through. Now let's see here. Oh, the other thing is uh, crossroad cards. There we go. So it's my turn. So on the, uh, the player's turn, uh, the other player to the player's right, they're gonna have to manually go up here and grab a crossroad card, bring it into their hand. Uh, there we go. And then, of course, you know, reveal if uh, its condition was ever met during my turn. And then if you, once uh, all things have been resolved. So let's say, for example, I didn't, con once we uh, then need to figure out these cards, then we're going to drop them here into the discard bin. And all of these things are done manually. Once uh, the round is complete, you're going to pass the first player token and then retrieve all of your dice that were spent. And then get ready, excuse me, get ready to re-roll for your next turn. So anyway, guys, uh, that's going to do it for this version of Dead of Winter. If you have any questions about this particular version or this setup, please leave a comment down below. I'm happy to answer them. Happy to give you guys some additional guidance if I may have uh, glossed over something in this particular version. Uh, please let me know. Uh, if you happened on this video and you enjoyed the content, I appreciate the support. Uh, if you'd like to leave a like and subscribe, definitely uh, appreciate that. But until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching.